Hi sir, welcome to BW. Congratulations on winning the award. So, how how you feel about the awards and all in BW after after this recognition? Well, you know, wonderful to be here at this uh, BW uh, D2C conclave, and uh, thank you so much for the recognition. And of course, feels good to be recognized by a you know well-known Indian media uh, player who's been around for a while. So you know, appreciate it and and uh, you know. Feel good for our team, which works very hard on building unique propositions in the D2C space. Also, as uh, when we talk about uh, D2C brands, it's the the marketing expenses in brand building is like growing around 30 to 40 to 50 percent. And sometimes more brands are spending in marketing. So, what's your take on it? How the emerging D2C brands can cut on the costs of marketing? So, I think multiple views there. Uh, you know, there's always going to be a base cost of marketing, which is sort of the market cost of impressions. Very tough to influence that. Uh, the great benefit of the digital world is that you uh, test small and scale what works. Uh, so I think if you do that very religiously, you can have far more controlled marketing expenses. Um, and uh, modern day media is quite good at at a very small sample, letting you know whether your ad concepts work, etc. I think unique product propositions definitely help in lowering cost of acquisition quite a bit. So if you want to do well, you need to have unique product propositions. If you if you are more generic, you're going to have a more challenging time. Um, and then if you really have high quality product, high quality customer experience, consumer experience, customer service experience, uh, you are going to have more repeat and if you have more repeat, you have lower advertising costs. So. Um, I think if you follow all those principles, still uh, the advertising costs are in the, the, the base cost of advertising, which is what the media companies sell you, is still good enough to make a return on. But you have to be quite disciplined in which, in the way in which you spend and acquire consumers, um, and quite disciplined in running a high quality business, so you have good repeats and spend less on advertising for the same consumer transacting the second time. Uh, also, when you talk about uh, a growing D two C brand, needs to focus more on uh, more on sales via its own channel like websites and stores, than compared to uh, marketplaces like Amazon and Flipkart. So, since you do most of your business from your own website, so what do you think? What what played? What was the major like decision you took that turned you into this ball game of making maximum sales from your own side? Yeah, so we do um, 97 or 98 uh, percent, depending on the month, from our own platform, our own websites, the Ayurveda experience, and versions of it in different countries. Um, there are with success stories both way, or your own platform and on uh, marketplaces. Uh, I think a lot depends on the category or products that you are in. Uh, also depends on the timing in every market. So. Uh, several years back when there were more spaces or gaps in marketplaces or opportunities that were not served. Uh, people who got into marketplaces did very well. Uh, so if you enter a category or the question is it very competitive on a marketplace and it is very competitive in the use case you're trying to solve somebody is serving that use case whether you can do anything different or add any different value. If you can't you're going to have a tough time I think on marketplaces. Um, and um, I think an own own website is useful if you have uh, wide enough SKU category, if you're trying to build demand for a category, if you really have the proficiency and the team to run a platform or a full sort of e-commerce operation yourself or a very large part of an e-commerce platform yourself, then a D2C can make sense. But you must have all the building blocks, which is great product, great content, great performance marketing, uh, great brand marketing um, and of course all the supply chain aspects of it. So if you're going to do it on your own platform, you you must have solved for several pillars, especially the content, analytics, performance marketing and technology pillars. If you have those pillars, then you know you can do a D2C, but you should consider your category set. If you're very low AOV, uh, D2C, average order value, D2C may be challenging for you. Uh, if you're 
lower in margin structure it may be challenging for you so roughly if you have high margin unique category demand has to be built you have the pillars of d2c in house then you know d2c can be a good solution if you are uh, in a category which is widely searched not well served on marketplaces uh, aov is lower margin is potentially lower you know marketplaces may be a good option also uh, india or in overall uh, the startup over, uh, startup ecosystem has been into funding winter since late 2022 but you recently raised funding in 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 late january or december i guess so what's your take on it how you cope up with it how what are the key factors you focused on while raising funds what are the key parameters investors look at in a d2c brands to, to, to trust upon yeah so you know honestly we just focus on running a great business and uh, or try to make our business great and keep try to improve it keep try to focus on the quality metrics the quantitative metrics the pnl the cost of acquisition the repeats um what we really want to focus is on if we acquire a consumer can we be profitable on this consumer can we retain him for a long time and can we have an economically sensible business with brands and products people love so we don't actually try to design the business for capital uh but i find when you run the business well and the business actually has good performance then capital ultimately is interested i mean ultimately investors can only be interested if you have a proposition that is going to return them capital um and i think uh, because you've had low burn in the past use very little capital to get to our sort of 350 crore plus revenue scale uh, in an environment where people have got scared about profitability or paths to profitability our uh, company has looked to have a strong sort of financial stability uh, and a good internal discipline to to keep working on that so i i would i would just suggest to everybody to focus on that and i think if you do that uh quality investors are definitely there to still do transactions and still make investments and we definitely had multiple interests and uh, uh and uh, and we sort of partnered with jungle ventures and sidbi and anicard and uh, sharp ventures this time also uh, what is one of the biggest learning you you yourself experience and learn in the in this entrepreneurship journey which you wanted to share with the emerging founders and aspir- aspiring founders uh, which uh, that of you uh, that are to our viewers basically yeah well i think my uh, Uh, a few mantras right one <laughs> mantra of course is uh, you know you have to work crazy hard to try to understand whatever problem you are working on uh, in a much deeper way but you know when i speak to people who are thinking of business or thinking of starting business or who are in business is uh, i think you have to think deeply about what is the unique proposition you have are you bringing it to an underserved market and do you have the way to actually fight distribution in that market yeah so um and then you must love that product or service um and and love that business you know because it takes a long time before all of this works out so you have to be quite all in um so it's a combination of what you bring to the table in terms of the drive the focus the passion the width of knowledge that you have but also you have to identify unique segments that you really can add value to or if you're going to an existing segment how you're going to do better than the existing products there so in our company we try not to clear new products which are not either very differentiated or better than what's available so where do you see uh, that due to see space going in next 5 to 10 years and what is your personal vision regarding your brand tie uh, so where i see the due to see space going you know i think the space is exciting but i think the space will remain exciting and strong for companies who have a unique proposition effective products high on safety and have solved for the consumer experience to have repeat 
uh, I think in the past few years, you have seen many brands have revenue and revenue can be an outcome of just distribution uh, or just an outcome of now you had available online tools, marketing tools, digital advertising platforms and these platforms were so efficient. If there was a big gap, you got distribution and so you got distribution, you got revenue and some people think revenue means you build brand. So uh, I think the space is still very exciting from an ecosystem point of view because the tools are there for young brands to grow. But a brand would have to be quite efficacious, quite safe for the consumer to trust it to repeat again and to be profitable and, and scale. Uh, our personal vision is to achieve all of these things. Of course, 95% of our business is global. We operate across the US, uh, Canada, Europe, Australia, now even Southeast Asia. And uh, we think our mandate will broaden even beyond Ayurveda. So we will maintain and keep these significantly large Ayurvedic brands that we have or brands that have grown well and cumulatively they are of some good size. And uh, we will also look at more opportunities uh, because once you have the skill of identifying opportunities, identifying consumer insights and knowing how to distribute through a direct to consumer channel, you can utilize that on multiple categories. So we are exploring new categories where we can find uh, efficacious and safe products which are in underpenetrated markets. And uh, so we are actively looking for such products and services. And when we find them, we will, um, you know, either invest in them or acquire them. Or when we see some opportunities, we may build products in those spaces uh, and then continue to distribute globally um, as we are today. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Thanks.